Cool. What's up, guys? You're watching To All The Crowd Rooms, a YouTube channel to help provide insights to the DIY music scene. If you like our free content and want to help us take over the world, you can do so by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. Hit that notification bell. You get the alert as soon as the episode's posted. Today, we have the heavy, heavy, low, low boys. Guys, we're going to go through and we're going to introduce each other. So I want to know who you are, what role in the band you guys are in, and what you've been up to since you disbanded. Andrew? Uh, Andrew. Yeah. <laughs> uh, my name is Andrew and I play bass. Uh, God, what have I been up to since then? It's been like 10 years. Uh, just fucking killing it, playing in other bands that aren't Damn. the same. Jesus. Yeah, what bands were those? Oh, uh, oh God, I'm going to go over it. Let's see. So after Heavy, I was in a band with Rob called Downstairs. Uh, nice. Lots, a lot slower, uh, darker in many ways. Yeah. Um, no, I, I noticed that you guys, uh, you have, uh, we'll get into Downstairs later, but uh, you guys like put out an album, then you did like a slow, like a slowed down version of that album. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, gosh, okay, we'll get into that later then. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Um, let's see, after that, I was in a band with Dan called Donkey Lips, like a <laughs> uh, skater punk um, nice. band. Played a lot of dungy basements. Uh, really fun. Um, and then cool. I was in a band called Riled. Nice. Um, yeah, like uh, twitchy, mathy. Was Riled the, the one with uh, the music video where everyone's putting on chapstick the whole time? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Yeah, Riled's kind of, like, heavy with all the, like, weird time changes. Um, but if it was, like, a slower indie band or so, it's, it's pretty wild and weird. Um, yeah, other than that, just... Uh, That's what I've mostly been up to besides working a normal, living a normal life, I would say. What's uh, the normal life consist of? Uh, just working nine to five, I guess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, as we all do. We're just growing up. Yeah. No, it's crazy to see uh, seen kids from back in the day now grown up and they have to work the nine to fives. And then uh, they end up getting back together to do these tours. So that's, uh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, totally um yeah who else we got here yeah uh so chris yeah can you hear me, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah sorry it's like i was like he was kind of cutting out so i was looking for better like service oh, was I cutting out? there you are <sighs> what up very nice so chris what are you doing in the band and what have you been up to since heavy heavy low low broke up um let's see so like i pretty much quit the not quit but just stopped playing music with everybody to go back to college and kind of like get that done um i don't know fucking just been in school i've gone i got my fucking marketing degree exercise science degree and now i'm working on chiropractic um about two years ago i stopped drinking and um picked up martial arts which has been cool so i'm working on um my blue belt and kippo karate Oh, fuck um, yeah. So I try to keep myself active and busy with doing that kind of shit. But um, musically, I stopped playing drums for about five years um, and then uh, started DJing. So I've been like doing CDJ type DJing stuff on the, just for fun. Oh, and then, that's yeah, I don't know, recently picked up a little electronic drum set and then um, started practicing more this year so i've been getting more into it and then to be honest with you like stopping drinking kind of got me back into my high school childhood dreams um as far as like playing music getting out there doing the stuff that i like pretty much just like destructed with like alcohol and just try to mask with that sort of like holy fuck like the band is breaking up i'm just gonna like drink myself out of this type of shit and then fucking 2012 kind of hit and everybody that was just a chaotic time period so um yeah, that was like the fall of that of the band at that time um, for me. But fucking finding everybody again, like through quarantine and stuff, you're able to like get closer and stuff with people. So it's been like a good experience to talk with people that way. Um, I don't know. I've just been going to school, to be honest with you, and haven't been playing very much music. 
Um, but yeah, just DJing. Damn, partying. that's crazy to hear that. Like <laughs> the breakup of the band was uh, like hit you really hard because I saw the explanation of like you guys put out in your MySpace when you guys broke up, and it kind of came off like you guys just didn't give a fuck about like the breakup. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot. That was my life, you know what I mean? So I literally had to, like, change my life and, like, try to get back to, like, what I was trying to focus on before the band um, as far as, like, school and that kind of shit. But it's funny because, like, I wish I would have kept playing music, though, because, like, in reality of it, like, I've finished all this, like, college shit, but, like, that didn't really get me to where I thought it was going to get me. I'm still mm -hmm. nowhere, you know what I mean? Like, fucking, <laughs> so I'm still in limbo. Um yeah. But fucking, I feel accomplished as far as like getting these degrees or whatever. At least I get to like, that's something that no one can take away from me. Um, but oh, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll give it to you, Rob. <laughs> that's awesome, but, man. Dude, yeah, congrats dude. on not drinking for the past two years. That's fucking awesome. It's oh, been yeah. an interesting experience, dude. Um, like, I still do like some hallucinogens and stuff. So, like, when you're on hallucinogens <laughs> and like you're like, not drunk it's a weird feeling you have to tell yourself i'm on drugs right now like you know what i mean like this is this is real this is happening whereas like when you're drinking you're like holy fuck i'm just gonna drink this off like fucking just party um the psychological side of it i've been hanging out at a nudist colony the past couple weeks yelling <laughs> <laughs> uh, at lupin lodge which is straight up naked people so like before like i don't know it's just like more social you walk up to everybody give everybody a hug everything's super cool and like awesome and like yeah yeah, yeah but you come down here to the bay everyone's like walking like six feet away i mean i understand i respect the rules but like to snap out of that sort of like life that we're being controlled in right now is just a interesting experience um to be around naked people too at the same time that's crazy. Wait, so what's the, I, I never looked into nudist colonies. Like what's the whole like mentality behind it? Like why do people, like, why do they exist? Um, it's just like the feeling. So like, I guess this is like an example. I've always told my girlfriends to like cover up their stuff. You know what I mean? That sort of controlling shit. But when you meet a girl and she's naked in front of you the first time, you can't tell her to cover up. You know what I mean? Like there's a whole <laughs> different like, feeling behind the people that you meet like it's just i don't know like it's like uh that sort of mentality like it's like a lot of the like rules of like life are like thrown away in that sense and it's just kind of just be who you are and yourself be naked fucking naked yoga is tight fucking when the bee lands on your nut sack that's always like an interesting <laughs> thing because you have to like knock the bee that's off right. and stay in the fucking yoga pose at the same time yeah. <laughs> dude that's amazing do you yo, you have to check out the show dating naked it's a reality show where people meet each other for the first time and go on a date naked together it only yeah. lasted two seasons but i swear by it. it's a good show <laughs> i love that show yeah so, it's good right? is it british <laughs> yeah. no no, oh, no it's, it's american oh wow they're like on an island somewhere not in the u.s though i think oh yeah i think okay. so too yeah <laughs> it's good that's all i gotta say <laughs> Nice. All I gotta All say right. on that. Danny. Yo. Um, okay. okay. Uh, I guess I left the band a little bit early, like kind of towards the end. We were just kind of like dying down. And except like these dudes like went to Australia after. But um, I fucking moved to Portland for a while and then chilled. And then, I don't know, traveled a bunch. Kind of did like van life for a couple of years with like random like traveling and shit. Uh, I lived in Florida for like a year. Um, and then now I'm in a Prius. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Super sick. I got super into Kendama in the last like two years. That's yeah, like took I, over my life. I want to hear about life. that because uh, no jumper for the viewers listening. Uh, actually, do you want to explain to the viewers who don't know what Kendama is, what it is? It's like a super sick way to meet girls. No, I'm just kidding. It's like a ball and cup toy. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this. It's like a really nerdy, it's like in the same family as like a yo-yo or like fucking yeah. devil sticks or some shit, you know, like a nerdy ass skill toy, but it's super fun. There's like a whole community behind it. There's like a lot of adults and like, I met a lot of people that are like similar minded that are like just like to party and have fun or like whatever um, through this toy. And like, I don't know, kind of took over and like, yeah, I run a little zine, like a Kendama zine now and I make some clothing and like a lot of my friends these days are like Kendama based and, yeah, it kind of just been my shit the last couple of years. I was mad depressed when I found it, so it kind of like 
took me out of a deep state. So like, oh, Kendama. That's fucking sick. Yeah, no, also about the Kendama, like I've watched a couple of your videos. Um, It's kind of like watching like a skate video essentially because you're doing tricks and stuff and you know, you put some music behind it and you make these like edits and stuff. But it's funny what you do specifically because (laughs) the content you build around like your your Kendama career, make a lot of like these Kendama parody songs and stuff like that. Do you want to talk about any of that? Uh, I just have ADHD, I guess, and fucking <laughs> drink, drink hella caffeine and smoke weed and just fucking get weird, I guess. But like, yeah, like you were saying, dude, it's mad similar to skating, to be honest. I was skating hella and then like, I kept fucking up my back and I had to quit. Like, I kept having to take time off work at the time and like, it sucked, dude. And I found Kendama like right at the perfect time and it gives me the same like satisfaction as skating, but it's honestly at this point, I think it's way better, dude. Like, I don't know. You can do it like anywhere. Like it's small. It's fucking portable. I don't know. It gives you that same like feeling though. Like you land a trick, like you spike it and like this, I don't know, endorphin driven satisfaction. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. If you land like this dope Kendama trick and then the ball goes straight into the thing at the end, it's just yeah. like, Oh my God, I did it. Yeah. It's sick. A lot of people hate on it, but I also have a Prius. So a lot of people hate on that. So. Wait, Dude, wait, you let's go. wait, with the haters, yeah. the haters real quick. You said there was some beat Kendama beef going on. Oh, dude, there's so much fucking Kendama fucking beef and drama and shit, dude. There's like so many motherfuckers. <laughs> what could like, possibly be beefing on Kendama? Oh man, you don't even, I don't even want to get into it. That's not for this podcast. It's a it's crazy though. Like it's it's fun, it's community for sure. I've met hella homies, but like like anything, like any community, you know, there's going to be, like, some beefs and some dramas and some, like, Yo, call dumb, someone dumb out. internet shit. Call uh, someone out and talk shit to someone right now. <laughs> nah, nah. Dude, someone just <laughs> called me the fuck out. I didn't do shit, but they, this dude runs a podcast. He sucks, but he came out with a podcast, and he talks shit about me, like, the whole time. Like, 20 minutes just, like, talking shit on me. What? Jesus. Is he saying you don't have stees yeah. or something? Yeah, he's talking shit about my stees, bro. Okay. Now nah, he's... No, he says, like, a bunch of shit. I don't know. It's fucking... He's a weirdo. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's dramas, yeah. <laughs> Besides <laughs> that, though, Kendama's sick. You should... Everyone watching this should get into it. Ignore the drama, you know? Like, that's the last thing. Dude, that I've comes been, at the very end. My buddy... Uh, I, you may know him. I think, I think he's friends with you on Instagram, Alex DuPont. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah. That's your buddy? Yeah. <laughs> he moved yeah, out to California yeah, and became a big uh, Kendama player. So I, I, and yeah. I watch his videos. It made me want to pick one up. I interviewed him. Me and a buddy interviewed him for my zine, the last issue that came out. Oh, dude. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. Alex Dupont's fucking sick. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, and also I wanted to ask you about uh, living in the Prius. So how's life <laughs> uh, adjusted to living on the road? And what do you do for money while living on the road out of your Prius? Is it like going from Kendama competition to... Yeah, I just make hella money with Kendama competitions. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, there's absolutely no money in Kendama competitions. Um, uh, I make a little money with the zine, I guess. But no, I do like seasonal work at universities. I sell posters and I'm just like super fucking minimalist and I just save money and like whatever little money I have, I just like, I'll work for a couple of months and then I'll take time off and just travel and then work again. Like, I don't know, it's kind of seasonal. I did the weed farm thing for like a couple of years and then this poster thing it's just better that's fucking sick and like cool yeah i just like try to go for seasonal things i've had a stint where i worked at like fedex for a year and like did a year painting in, in portland or not portland fucking florida but yeah for the most part just like seasonal work and just kind of whatever the fedex thing was tight uh cause I was yeah. with dan when he was driving FedEx. i was i was not tight when i lived at <laughs> when i was working at fedex dude i couldn't smoke weed for a year dude i was like some annoying adult like hey keep it down fucking I work at FedEx, you know. We, like, I don't know. We used to get in the back of the FedEx truck, and he'd drive us around. Uh, God, I don't, I don't even remember. I feel like also was it like your last day? Did you smoke in the FedEx? At the I smoked weed. Yeah, the last like month, I didn't. I didn't give a fuck when we were smoking weed. I'm pretty sure we definitely like smoked in the truck a few times. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Shot fun. fireworks at it. Oh yeah. Don- okay. Donkey lips. I should have mentioned I was in donkey lips too with Rue musically. Yes. I've done a bunch of random shit. I'm always doing like random fucking weird shit. I don't oh yeah, stank and ranking. I don't I don't do anything with. Yeah. Uh, I recently oh, deleted like all my stink and ranking shit. Why is that? 
too much. I calm. dated a girl. <laughs> yeah, there's like so many people. Were, anyway, I was making too much YouTube money. Um, I dated this girl that like <laughs> her her dad was a super lurker. Fuck, dude. I hope he doesn't find this. We broke up and shit, but um, <laughs> I was dating this girl and like he uh, fucking found my YouTube, found all my my videos, and like didn't didn't find that they were funny or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. And then, like, we almost, like, broke up because of my rap videos from, like, fucking seven years ago, dude. Oh. And then, uh, so I freaked out. I, like, deleted a bunch. I archived some. Like, some are up there. They're just, like, I'm just, they're just chilling right now. Yeah. yeah you you gotta uh, know what to search to find them. Damn yeah, yeah. Is a sick band, and not many people know about it, called Shitstorm. Uh, Thought you were gonna like, say that. It was, like, the sickest band in Portland. Yeah, no one... <laughs> No it's one even good. knows about it. It was tight. He it's just played good. bass with drum tracks and screamed. Oh, that's fucking sick. There's a SoundCloud or like a band camp or something. I have to check okay. that out. That sounds like some uh some like Death From Above 1979 shit. <laughs> Very similar. It's good, yeah. They copied us a bit, but it's good. <laughs> For sure. All right, Robbie, what do we got? Um Jeez. Yeah, I don't know. Um I joined a band as well. I guess, yeah, I was in Downstairs. And then, yeah, then we, I started a band called uh, I Wanna Die. That was tight. Uh, um, but I've been making movies this whole time, like uh, short films Fuck yeah. and things like that. Looks um, like in that chair. So that's my, <laughs> <laughs> that's my, my passion is like making, making uh, like film projects and things like that. Did you go to uh, film school or did you just start doing it DIY? I just started doing it DIY. Somebody gave me a camera. I could never w afford one or I'd have started earlier, but our buddy Timmy gave me a camera and I started that way and just like ripping off programs and shit like that. And then eventually I made friends with like um, cinematographers and things like that. So I have like a, like a little crew now. Uh, so yeah, in the beginning, I was just making shit on like a DV camera, but um, yeah, oh, yeah, it's 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 gotten a little higher in production lately. Very cool. Yeah, I noticed that for downstairs, you did the music video for oh yeah for that, and uh, also um, I was checking out your teaser uh, trailer for uh, Morning Deliveries. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to tell, talk a little bit about that? Because I thought that looked really fucking dope. Yeah, that's um so that's a project. It's a Stephen King dollar baby. So we got uh, the rights to a Stephen King story for uh for a year and uh so we had to put that production together and raise money and shoot that within a year and um yeah, we did that. We raised about 8,000 bucks. Um so it's the highest budget I've ever worked with. Nice. Was, I'll send I'll send it to you. Um, please i dude. after this is over yeah no can you uh tell the viewers what the plot of it is um it's just about a milkman who um just wants to fuck everybody's day up i mean it's it's yeah he's just like putting poison in people's things like the the things that he's delivering um but it's like it's it could be any time it could be any place type thing it's like an americana like um just like art house movie about a killer milkman amazing yeah no that's so dope anything else uh worth noting since the band broke up um <laughs> if you want to see more of my uh like shorts robbysmith.org mm -hmm. anybody who's watching that check it out if anybody wants to give me a ton of money to make a feature film <laughs> please do that hell yeah so Rue, you were telling me uh, the la you had a funny story the last time you guys got together for a video chat recently. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess, was that before this started? Yeah, before you were filming, you asked the last time we'd all been together. And it had been like years. Like, uh, wait, I'm not on mute, right? Oh, yeah, cool. It had been uh, like, uh, gosh, sorry, this Zoom is kind of freaking out. You could hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. yeah uh cool so um like we haven't even all been in the same room since we broke up because of covid 
like we all had plans to meet up um on like the the week that everything started to get pretty weird like in march dan was at my house and we were um kind of like re practicing and relearning the parts and doing all that and then the next week um everyone was supposed to meet up at my house in portland after dan and i like relearned the songs and we'd we'd spend like a weekend or whatever just like practicing for this upcoming shows so that never happened so like we haven't all been together in a same place and i don't know like 10 years or something uh and so what happened was this uh this woman like messaged our instagram asking if um we're kind of like pointing out that it was her boyfriend's um birthday coming up and he was going to go to our show um in portland but that got canceled stop (laughs) and so anyway so uh she was asking if we could like send like a letter or just even a chat to this dude on his birthday, like his 24th birthday or something. And this was in April maybe. Um, And instead we just like, oh, I was just like, I think we could do better. I think we could probably get one of us to like video chat. Just in the room yelling. Steve fucking Steve, man. Maybe just Uh, check. (laughs) No, man, get Steve some food. so anyways, uh, what we ended up organizing was all of us on a video chat um, calling this dude on his birthday. Just some random so, fan? Yeah, yeah. And uh, he was like kind of fucking wasted or something. And it was just, honestly, it was funny because all of us were, like, it, I was just like stoked to see everyone. And you could tell we were just like riffing and having a good time seeing the whole band. But like, I kind of <laughs> forgot that that dude was even on the phone call. <laughs> It's amazing. It was chaos. Yeah, yeah. me too. <laughs> <laughs> and then we called Chip, and this other dude <laughs> answered. It's Chip's old number, and uh, he he was like, I think he, I don't know, he had like a New Jersey accent, and he was like bald and uh, just pretended to be Chip for a little while. <laughs> this is part of the fucking call. <laughs> Wait. Did Denny answer and just show his like head for a second? Like, yeah, yeah. He wouldn't show his face for a while. Wait, you, you got weird. a random person to call into the video chat and no, no we we thought it was um we thought it was chip like i just called his old number on accident and then this random dude uh picked up and joined the chat for a while yo that's amazing <laughs> so good all right so let's get into talking about the history of heavy heavy low low i want to ask you guys can you tell me about the first time heavy heavy low low what the what the first band practice was like and if you guys were getting together <laughs> with the intentions of having a specific sound when uh you guys were writing together for the first time uh, i don't remember the first practice do you really be with you and uh, you and chris uh no, me no me you chris and matt right Toddle. Yeah, it, was, it was me you it was me dan and matt i don't think i was there yeah and we just fucking played all night long in my little room in Gilroy and then just like made noise and just kind of wrote some songs. We no, wanted kids, to sound kids, kids. Guess, like daughters slash blood brothers slash these arms are snakes. But like, I, I've i never had a lesson on drums, so I, I don't know. I can always try to sound something else, but I always feel like I sound like myself. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was like our first practice. We would, uh, we were juniors in high school, and Matt was like a 22 year old. And um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Matt Cottle yeah. was like a big part of like an inspiration too. If I we if we hadn't a Matt, met Matt Cottle, I don't think we would have sounded ever like we sounded. Um, he had a big like um, inspiration on that sort of side of things. Um, so then we started kind of playing more local shows and then we combined it bands with, with Rob's band. Um, okay. So that we, Rob and Chip like needed somewhere to live. I don't know, something like they had to get out of Taft. So um, they came here to the Bay and we started jamming and then we just like started a band. But I guess originally we had toured with that other band and then um, me and Andrew and Danny were like, fuck, we need to get these guys. So like we, uh, we swooped Rob and um, 
chip and then that gave us like this whole other like heavier side of like more of a metal side of things um but that's what happened i don't know that's how we found each other that's crazy and <laughs> so i was trying to understand what the errors were when uh rob and matt were in the band together as the two main vocalists there was no errors it was just the fact that matt was dating a girl at the time and he wanted to pursue that and um we got in like some big van arguments uh involving fireworks yeah we and, shot um, so many fireworks at him <laughs> yeah this the oh, he's driving <laughs> What all right? You, let's you hear, shot him in the chest it. with a mortar in Texas. And quit. And he got really upset what? about that. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, how, really how did, how did we get there? How reason. did we get to shooting fireworks <laughs> at your old singer? Wait, yeah, we're, he was standing was around. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> No, they had the fireworks we we've never seen before. I don't know. He just had the best reaction. He was kind of like the dad of the band, I guess. And we were all just like kind of obnoxious kids. And we just like fuck with them heavy. Like, like oh shoot mortars at his chest we and were, face. We were driving up. Um, we were driving up to a show in Seattle. Uh, I think we were going to play at. We drove all night in this like sketchy van that we borrowed from our friend. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's where we went with Fall Troy. Oh, I don't know, like pretty early um, and it, it was like pouring raining and he was driving and we fucking threw like like a rack of black cats. That was uh, the second time though. That was like the second or third time or like we it was like the hundredth happening. time. Full. We <laughs> fucked with him so hard. Wait, so he's driving with all of your guy. He's trying to make sure everyone's safe and you guys are throwing fireworks at him. Yeah. That's at his feet. That's how it goes in the band. Dude, we loved fireworks. We had a cooler that we would just do mortars just because they were cool and they were fun. Yeah. We had a step. There was like a step like before you get out and that was like the trash slash, slash like bathroom slash like fireworks fucking everything. Amazing. This is yeah. kind of mad freezing, but. Um, step. <laughs> all right, so what's, let's, what's the songwriting process for Heavy, heavy Low Low? <laughs> we all are just like <laughs> it, okay i i like not it, one I guess. <laughs> i'd say it depends on like the the era um like some of the earlier stuff was a lot of like dan and chris and matt coddle i'd say um uh and then the maybe like so that would be um like when we were doing our ep kids 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 or um courtside seats um and then or what else oh yeah fuck it. it was a lot of like dan and chris i started to write some more stuff when we went in to do um everything's watched um and then honestly like it's it's kind of weird like i feel like we'd never had a pattern it was just like Yo, I came up with this thing. Honestly, like our songwriting process was probably just like a disconnect in communication. It was like, yo, here's this thing. And someone would be like, oh yeah, just play that. And, and I, like if Dan showed me something, I would just like do some uh, some other thing over it. And like in both guitars would never really match, but like they somehow would like sort of be like a polyrhythm of each other and just like match up when they needed to be and things like that. Cool. Yeah, no, I was going to say, like, we were talking before, I was like, I didn't realize how, like, bands like you guys or, like, Fall of Troy, like, just were, didn't do the whole, like, verse, chorus, verse thing. Was this an intentional thing for the band? Like, did you guys, like, consciously, like, set out to not follow the cookie cutter song formula? I don't like that. We're not, like, artists. We're not, like, real musicians. I'm not a real musician. I just play drums. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to read music. So, like, that's what came out in our writing style. I don't know. We never like followed any rules like musicians do because we didn't know the rules. I don't know. I didn't know. Yeah. yeah. Chris, you're breaking up a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. Let me see. That verse chord bridge stuff is just so boring, too. Like, okay. it's so. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Our whole song yeah. was kind of like a chorus. <laughs> you know what I mean? Fun chorus. Fun chorus. Like, it was Super like catchy. 
we would write like the rhythm side of things and then add everything on top of it. Like it would be like the percussion and then it would add on top of that. Mm -hmm. um, if that was the process and then vocals would come like, like where some bands might write vocals first, we would always like, I always feel like that would come last. Um, I don't know if that's just the way that we did our thing. Nice. So would you guys like what? record like in pre-production some demos and then Robbie or Matt would listen to it over and just kind of write over it? Even before. Yeah. I don't know. No, we'd. Rob, I, what do you guys say? We'd. I, we would just, I would just come in at the end of most of our songs, I, I feel like. Can you guys hear me? Kind of. No, I didn't get any. It's cutting, it's cutting in and out. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Just um, talk slower. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, no, we never really demoed. Um, but we would just we would just do, like, classic garage practice. Cool. Um, fuck, I was going to say. So, oh, I feel like um, a lot of, like, like, now when we look back at it, we look at a lot of the albums that we recorded, but, like, we really didn't focus a lot on recording. Like all of it was about the live shows. Yeah. And so yeah. like um, a lot of the way we wrote songs would be like to write weird songs that would come off as really cool live. Like we just kind of wanted to create a weird spastic and uncomfortable like experience. Uh, Can yeah, you give me an example of a part in one of your songs that translates really well to stage? um the, ba the bass the heaviness the like the vibration of it like none of our records ever ca really captured our sound in my opinion but sam was able to somewhat do that um but i just feel like we were a totally different band on cd than we were live cool yeah a lot of like just we'd have these like parts that were like just crazy sounds like we would just like have like a weird bridge that would just sort of be like an exploratory sound or so that like we do a lot of pedals or like really weird twitchy guitar parts and like that was fun live because it could be different every time but then like with recording mm -hmm. you just do one and that's the one you know that's the one everyone knows but like a lot of the times the songs weren't always uh like there were parts that could be changed all the time sort of <clears throat> sure and did was any uh hallucinogens did they play any parts in any of the songwriting process is your duster music... a hallucinogen <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah it, i did a ton of lsd and uh stuff like that so yeah most of our songs are about uh robbie drugs. you're breaking up again am i cutting out again yeah. You might need to go to the Wi Fi or something. Oh yeah. We did a, or I did a lot of L S D uh writing writing music. Yeah, but, especially with like the lyrics because like I was just reading over like some of your <laughs> lyrics and uh like for instance, Texas Chainsaw Mascara. It mm -hmm. literally is about uh, you know, being uh held down and all your limbs being cut off by a chainsaw and the, the fear of uh, death that's you're about to, you're about to die. Um, a lot of the lyrics are similar to this. Do you want to explain the, the songwriting process lyric wise? Um, I just like, well, well, none of them are really about me. That's, that's uh, I like to write stories. Uh, hence the, the whole film thing, but um, so yeah, I like to write stories and, and things from dis different perspectives and explore different head spaces and things like that. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the uh, motivation behind most of the songwriting and the lyrics. Nice. Uh, what's the, f your favorite story that you've written in your lyrics? Um, toward the end, um, I really like, um, uh, I don't remember what the song's called. What's the last one called on Hospital Bomber? Root is it? Um, we we incompetent ser sperm. That's one. Mm -hmm. I like that one. <clears throat> What's that one about? Um, just meeting an old lady on the bus who's like completely lost her mind and like her kind of warning you 
to not get stuck in certain, you know, lifestyles or situations. And it's just like a, yeah, <laughs> it's kind of a message song, I guess, without nice. being one. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So to, uh, in high school, you guys got the attention of, uh, of your peers by playing one of your gigs naked. I'd like to know a little bit more about this. We just played in Saran Wrap on Halloween. That was all we could decide yeah. what to wear. Wait, Dan really? would play naked. Yeah, Dan would play naked a lot, but like as a whole band, like we just wanted to come off and just like, I don't know, we all had girlfriends. I don't know, we all were just like, it was a good time. That song too. Saran Wrap <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> It was in a junkyard too. Uh, we played in Saran Wrap in a junkyard on a weird makeshift stage. Yeah, it was tight. Off Monterey or First Street. So fully naked with, Sar- with Saran Wrap. Yeah, um, I was Saran Wrap socks. underwear. <laughs> yeah, Saran Wrap underwear. Um, yeah, it's funny because you bring that up, but like I feel like we also just did. We we play like. A lot of like shows, random just shows in our did. underwear all the time. Like probably like. Over Dude, the last shows. tour that we all did is like a complete crew where we played a lot of house shows. Like on the way back, um, like when she got fucked up. Dude, we played like half of those naked. I yeah. Say. Oh, I was thinking about that tour. Um, that tour was sick. Like what had happened? Was yeah. We um, that was with, uh, Fear Before. I never played naked. Well, yeah, Rob, <laughs> for sure. Uh, Rob has small pee-pee. Yeah, he has, well, Rob has really small nipples, actually. People He's got know. a dark dick. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it, there's, it's half-toned. I feel like it's multi-toned, for sure. I've seen it all the time. Oh, yeah. It's like a half-split sure. in the Kandama world. It's a half-split. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wait, what was I oh, the, okay, so the last, one of the last tours we did um, with, Dr. Manhattan and Fear Before, uh, the Stay Weird tour, like what had happened was, um, oh, I think, oh, what's good, Brad? Brad's just here, y'all. Uh, oh, what up, Brad? Um, hey, Brad. So we, uh, gosh, sorry, Brad just threw me off on this thing. So anyway, so we had like come from doing a bunch of tours where we had like a booking agent booking all these shows. And then we had sort of like dropped off uh, Ferret and kind of like, um, just like, booked a lot of these shows ourselves and um used uh fear before booking agent a little bit and and i think that that resulted in um the us booking a ton of house shows so like we'd play these like venues but then every now and then play these like really weird like back country do you, do you remember that like show, <laughs> oh, yeah. Louisiana? The South yeah, Carolina yeah. One. Where the or yeah, there was Paso, there. Paso, the Paso whole was South crazy. was fucked. all of them, dude. They're just like we play these really weird backcountry house party shows. That like honestly, they're sick as fuck. Like we play this one on Thanksgiving where there's just this like old country house with like two or three hundred people there, and we just played mustard. in someone's front room, and like people were opening the fridge and just like spraying mustard and like everyone was packed all of the rooms like people would uplift all the beds and there'd just be beds floating around and uh <laughs> but yeah we, because of that like when it was more in like a house setting like we would just get down to our underwear and dan would be naked for a lot of the shows we played it's comfortable yeah yeah i don't know yeah but yeah the, that, the one that you brought up the saran wrap one was fun because we had a song called strand rap love affair so it was like a play on that it's probably the first time we'd like branched out and started doing some weird shit so that's a good transition from the the, the recorded song to the to the live performance yeah <laughs> dude wait i saw a picture that you guys posted and one said something like it rained inside your van got all of your merch wet you sold wet t-shirts to everyone and uh, one of your members ended up pissing in the hallway, and you guys didn't get to play the gig because you guys got kicked out beforehand. Oh, yeah. Is that a fucking knitting factory? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. <laughs> so, got kicked out of both knitting factories, New York and LA. Or oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That was um, that show in San Diego at the house um, where, yeah, where we like, where Dan was just straight up naked. Um, that dude, that was a fun show. 
That was just. I don't remember rain getting in the van. That was, but we um we had it was in the trailer. Oh shit! We oh uh, yeah, well, we like crazy. tried to pull the trailer into like under something that like cut off the like lift up window thing. It's like knocked the whole thing mm-hmm. off. Um, so then it rained the next day and just got shit hella wet. <laughs> All of our instruments were soaked. <laughs> but you were still able to sell the merch, but you didn't get to play the actual gig because you got kicked out beforehand. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was fucking crazy. Um, I don't know. Someone want to describe their experience of that show? Just, or? just a little you know, pee. Is uh, it the factory? Factory? Yeah. Like, I told a story yesterday, actually, just fucking how, like, the security guards of, like, the Strip were different security guards than the venue, but the security guards of the Strip had, like, found Danny outside, so they kicked him off the entire Hollywood Strip. So, like, (laughs) the venue security guards were like, sorry, we can't do anything about that. Um, Just kicked out. So then we had all our shit set up on stage, and then we walked on. I think I spit in the security guard's face. Um, I remember you spitting and like throwing your drums. Thuggy was I, pouring two eleven in my fucking mouth and shit. Yeah, I like yeah. we were like stage, cussing everyone out. I grabbed my kick drum, I threw it in the sky, and the fucking like the pointy part of the kick drum stuck in the stage, and the kick drum just stayed at this weird like angle. Andrew knocked over all his cabs. Fucking everything was just like bam, bam, bam. And then the um, the crowd was like, let them play, let them play. These arms are snakes. Was playing. We were so stoked on that. And we never got to play for them. All they yeah, hold up real quick. We just broke our shit and took off. It was like actually like a very cool experience to not play and just like trash everything. But I don't know. We just started yeah. arguing after that shit because like we like wanted to play, we couldn't play, and then that just like that was like kind of like one thing that just like we just all got mad at each other for over nothing, just stupid shit. I don't know. Was it common for you guys to break your gear on stage? Yeah. Yeah. I, who was paying for the new gear when you guys were on tour? Somehow it just always worked. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew Andrew would just fucking like screw his like guitar back together. The neck would like fall in half off the thing. Well, I would like, get, oh, uh, Europe. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I had a Yamaha bass sponsorship or whatever. And so I would just like tell them, that I like would fall over and break my base or something, but really I'd just be like slamming it and throwing it and shit. Um, that one was funny because it was um, the basis of Megadeth. It was like his signature model, and I was like emailing the dude, um, the like my contact at. Or wait, did I say Yamaha? What did I have? Uh, not Yamaha. Um, what was the fucking shit that? Who Hammer. Electra? Hammer? No, hammer? no, no, no. What were they called? Oh, first act. Uh, P- no, no. Oh, yeah, we had, yeah, first act. No, what I'm thinking of is PV for some reason. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, like, so what had happened was like this dude, the contact at PV would would be like, "Yo, I'll, I'll give you these free bases if bases if you play with them, like take photos with them and shit." Which I never took photos of them. Oh. Like, and then um, they'd be like, "We can put you in magazines." It's like I don't, I don't want to do that. But anyways, what had happened was they sent me this the Megadeth signature model, and eventually, <laughs> I like messaged them and was like, "Hey, I don't really like this model very much. Can you send another one?" And it ended up being that the rep was just the actual basis of Megadeth that I was telling him I didn't like his model. <laughs> <laughs> Oh whatever he sent me some he sent me a, a few guitars and we would just I don't know not have nice stuff or have half broken stuff all the time. Yeah, I mean I I know that like a lot of bands they'll they'll go on tour if they're going to wreck their gear they'll bring like an Epiphone instead of a Gibson just cuz they know they're going to throw it around and shit. Yeah, and I feel like we weren't um like a I don't know. It just we just happened sometimes. Sometimes we'd play shows and we'd be like, alright, let's just put our shit back together. And sometimes it'd just be shows where like the the times we go craziest was when the crowd wasn't reacting. It was just like funnier to see them uncomfortable than excited. And we just like I don't know. There's been a bunch of weird fucking shows where like we maybe played one song and then realized it wasn't gonna go well, so we just like 
make noise for 10 minutes and just do fucking weirdo shit. That's amazing. Uh, it's like your spite making noise just <laughs> just to tell people to go fuck themselves. That's amazing. Uh, that was like a whole point. Yeah. <laughs> just to tell everybody to go fuck themselves pretty much. We were just trying to confuse people with stuff. We'd play stuff three times instead of four. I don't know. That's just kind of made it fun. We're just trying to confuse everybody the whole time. <laughs> I love that. No, that's punk rock as fuck. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the writing process of courtside seats to the greatest fuck. Um, what was that like? Where'd you guys record? Uh, in Facebook. Before Facebook is there, which it is now. Or wait, not or Google. It was in Google, in Mountain View. This building we recorded inside of Google now, which is Google. Um, we were still in high school. I think I was a junior, maybe a senior. Um, we spent months on that fucking CD court side. I feel like we spent a long time we're trying to record that. We recorded it like six songs now, like in the beginning and six songs in the end, and they like kind of sounded differently. So like that CD just kind of has like a weird flow to it. A lot of the songs weren't made at the same time. Right. Um, but I don't know. We recorded with a hip hop producer as well. Really? So did yeah, he, he mostly have did like, like hip hop? Okay. So did he have like an idea of like what you guys were going for? Yeah, he was a weirdo. Um, <laughs> he was friends with Matt, I'm pretty sure, and we'd always go over to his house and smoke a bunch of weed. So he was on on the level for sure. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure we knew what we were going for. <laughs> yeah, like it was so early on. That was the first time. So that was put out through 12 gauge. And it was like the first time we put out a record through a um, record label. Okay. And um, you originally recorded oh with, uh, with Sam Pura, your, your first EP and some of those songs made no, the cops onto... just pulled up. So I got to go for a second. <laughs> Wait, really? I'm going to go to this other parking lot. He's probably pulled over him. Yeah. Yeah, I got pulled over. It's not a big deal. I'll just here. I'll just like mute it. Yeah, keep. Uh, he, she should <laughs> leave keep, it on, dog. Leave it on. It on. <laughs> uh, you didn't see all those lights. <laughs> the uh, okay, wait. So some things are I feel like a little uh, jumbled here. So we did record with Sam Pierre, but that was after. Um, so like. We recorded with, um, we recorded a EP, like a little short set of songs with um, Andy from this band called, um, uh, oh, what the fuck are they called? Um, Plans for Revenge. Yeah, yeah, Plans for Revenge. Revenge. Yeah. Uh, okay, so we did that. That's called Kids, Kids, Kids. Then, then we did Court Sides. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so we, we did that. Uh, and then after that, so we courtsides came out and it was through 12 gauge, and but it was just it was just a um, single release sort of contract. So we then kind of went on ourselves again and did fuck it with Sampira at his mom's garage. Um, fuck it was free too. We di we didn't sell fuck it until we like years after it came out. That, that CD was meant to be given away for free. I don't really like to charge for music. I really wish that everybody could just have it. Um, and that was kind of the mentality behind fuck it. We were just like, we're just going to, we just press CDs and just gave them away. We didn't sell them. Um, and then we went on tour and then we started to sell them. But that was until like years after fuck it had came out. So who paid for the original pressing of fuck it when you started giving them away for free? We, we made, made them out of <laughs> envelopes, out of little envelopes, and then we um, screen pressed the CDs ourselves. They were just everything was made by hand, and that like really helped everything. Like even courtside seats, like we put the saran wrap on those fucking CDs ourselves. Um, so yeah, we'd put like condoms inside of them, Crazy. razor blades inside of some of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's better. amazing. <laughs> We put a corn CD, I think, in one. Or something. <laughs> yeah. Follow the leader. Yeah, yeah. Yo, so you're telling me that like there's a limited handmade pressing of fuck it out there that people have? 
Yeah, yeah, I never see it. Like people yeah. will show what they have, and like I never see that one because it was just in like this long envelope that we put the CD in, like a like Manila Manila envelope. Screen printed, it. yeah. Yeah, like folded it, and it's like screen printed with a truck on it. Amazing. I I don't know if you guys saw this, but I saw someone did made a pressing uh, of your guys' albums, but on eight track. Oh yeah, I saw that. That's Andrew knows sick. more about that. I don't know much about that. Uh, but I don't. I don't know much. Apparently, they sell them do. too. So <laughs> I wonder what what's going on with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got like fucked out of a lot of our rights for CDs. Like people own our music and stuff that like we're not able to press and like like even our Spotify. Like we don't even know who fucking controls that. Like that's, Wait, really? Like, yeah, we have no idea. It's super weird. Like Andrew doesn't even like to listen to Spotify for that one reason. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like here's the thing: we do know, and it's doable. It's just like it's such like corporate bureaucracy that like I don't know if it's worth like trying to dig through and say. The weird thing is also like when we did these. So we have like two contracts with Ferret or two albums that are contracted through ferret and like then ferret goes under and then they sell the rights to all their music to um like a big publishing. publishing yeah it's, it's so it's just um rhino and warner brothers yeah so if anyone wants to fucking dig through that and um put out everything's watched through that we don't we're down i just like i don't like there's it, i just don't even want to have to fucking do it i don't care so much at the moment somebody was gonna put out uh everything's watched and then he kidnapped his own son and strangled his wife and uh went to prison wait what this guy this random dude he he had never put out a record before very interesting fella like with his rapport online and he was gonna put up the money to put out everything's watched on vinyl yeah because he said he had a bunch of interest yada yada I didn't hear him for hear from him for a while, and then somebody sent me a link to a um, news story saying that he had choked his wife and kidnapped his own son, and that he was going to prison for a while. So that, yeah. and I oh guess he was a God. teacher at a uh, Christian uh, college. So, <laughs> very very that, interesting. Yeah. That is so wild. Um, How did you end up finding out about that? Somebody sent me a link. They were like, hey, I've been talking to this guy too on Facebook, like through one of those like math core boards or something like that. And he was like, this dude just went to prison because it was pretty big news. Uh, I think it was in like Louisville or something like that. Or Indiana. Indiana. Yo, Dan, do you get that sweatshirt at the Shore house? No, I made it. It's a Kendama one. Nice. Shout out. All right. Yeah, uh, 40 bucks if you guys want to. Just a <laughs> note. Everything's watched. Everyone's watching. I saw you guys just put out that uh, it just turned 14 years old today. Dang. Happy birthday. Yeah, I've heard happy Libra? Birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> that album's a Libra? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. So do you guys want to talk about that album at all? What was the uh, difference between that album than uh, Courtside Seats? We recorded that Everything Watch album under a time limit, and that was a little bit different for us, and we've never been under that, so we had a week to record that. We also went up there without a full album, which was stupid. We weren't really prepared. <laughs> um, we went up there, and we just kind of wrote like three or four of those songs in the moment straight up like just kind of jamming and then like party girls was written there um i don't know there's another one really we just wrote them there um i don't know casey bates was like a big fucking producer that was like our first time working with somebody big with a budget rest in peace um, tom faffle yeah, we recorded yeah. with this dude. He uh, did sound sound with Nirvana. He was Nirvana's sound guy. And he uh, checked into a hotel room. There was a drug deal going on. He got fucking shotgunned through the hotel room. Um, and it killed him. But I only tell that story as more of a way to bring up his, like, memory. And uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, he's Crazy. tight. I feel like you guys keep like rushing these like, oh, by the way, this happened, but you don't really go into detail about it. Wait, what just happened? Oh god. Um the Oh, okay. Well, first I uh oh, I want to say that we I I like saw this interview with Casey Bates where he talks about recording with us and so do you know, uh, he, Casey Bates recorded the Fear Before, a lot of Fear Before stuff. And, nice. Um, Chiodos, I think. Yeah, Gatsby's American Dream way back in the day. And so, like, that was a big deal for us to record with this dude. Who, well, we had just come from recording with Sam Pira, who at the time it was his mom's house, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I guess in the interview, he talks about how he was nervous to record with us and didn't want to record at his own studio. So he rented out this other studio from this dude <laughs> Trump of Affle, who like had a, a nice studio and apparently Casey made no money off of recording from us because he spent it all on renting another place to like ensure that we didn't fuck up his place well he saved money by ne- us not fucking up his shit I guess yeah but <laughs> it all money. it all like, I don't want the naked boys <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> being naked in my place. Yeah, you got weird at Casey Bates for sure. <laughs> There's some weird shit that went down. There was like that fucking recording. Oh yeah, we were fucking. We were asking this dude Tom was. A, I don't know. He's probably in his forties, late forties or something like that. Uh, oh, no, he was hella old. Was he older than that? <laughs> he was like, he was 50, like fifty. 60, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you a mind fog? Yeah, mind fog. Yeah. Nah, he's like forty-five. He, like, he recorded Nirvana great and white. white. Yeah. Great hey. White's like early 80s. It's like that fool was jamming back in the early 80s. Yeah. Well, his hairline, it, his lack of hair definitely looked like he was a bit older. The, he called weed mind fog if that <laughs> puts a date on anything. I think the name of that album is like the most important thing of the time period of like how we felt about the industry. And just about like everyone watching us on MySpace, and it's just like it was a big thing. Like everything's watched, um, everyone's watching. <laughs> we were just like fucking starting to realize that. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I thought was... the name came from uh, the movie uh, "They Live" or "They're Alive." Which they one live. am I thinking of? They live. They're thinking they, they live. live, but yeah. now that uh, that that song's from. Um, or that title or whatever is from, yeah, just like a bunch of people making shit up about us, like throughout time. So like, I don't know, it just came to us. It's like everything's watched. Everyone's watching. Damn, what were people making up about you guys? Just the weirdest shit. I think one of them was like, gosh, somebody's shit in their clothes hamper. <laughs> it wasn't us. There's some uh, rumors. People made rumors and shit. Some weird shit. I was about to say, because, like, going through the, the MySpace archives, I saw you guys just seemed like the band that would, uh, you know, you became known as being, like, the stoner band that would party with the fans after the shows. Um, do you have any good memories from just hanging out with fans? So many. <laughs> super blunt in El Paso sticks out. <laughs> yeah. You would roll through with a super blunt, like, every time we played El Paso. What's a oh, super yeah. blunt look like? A fucking like he would roll up like an ounce of weed and like this huge blunt, dude. That we would smoke for like hours. Like it, we'd <laughs> smoke it at the, like at the venue. Then we'd go to a party and there'd be like three quarters of it left. And then like the next morning, he'd be like, "Oh, you guys want to hit this?" And like <laughs> it was like El Paso. We always had mad love in El Paso, but literally like I don't know. It, yeah, H- hanging out with the fans was hella fun. We smoked with other people and like chilled and, and partied. We got to stay at some cool houses and stuff for sure. The yeah. fun, the fun thing is like, um, we we'd come from California where at that time we had access to like really good weed and we were used to it. And then we'd go like out in the south and stuff, and people would be like, "Yo, let me smoke you out after this." And like, uh, it was a lot funner to sh- smoke them out with our like crazy good weed, and then just watch them <laughs> just, totally just lose their mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like uh, super weed, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. I don't know. This, that was the funnest part was just hanging out and being a normal person. I think that that's what we all really liked. Like, that was the whole thing about everything from like uh, everything's watched. And then, like, we sort of like 
I, I don't know. I, I never really liked being, I don't even like when people are like, yo, you were in heavy, heavy, oh, like, I, I don't know. I think we all consider ourselves normal people. Mm-hmm. So like, that's, uh-huh. just the, that's the funnest yeah. part about it. Did, uh, was there any like nightmare stories of like staying at like a fan's place where like, it was, it, uh-huh. the shit just got awkward really quick? I got one yeah. kind of. Or whoever. On, well, we dip. stayed at we stayed at this one dude's house. I might fuck up some details, but he was like a lost energy drink, like rep, or he like yeah. partial owner oh, or something. Yeah. But we we stayed at his house, right? And at first, we kind of thought he was like some kook. We're like, this dude's kind of weird. So we started like fucking around and super gluing like all his shit. We super glued like <laughs> the remote <laughs> to the table. We super glued like the fish food to the fish tank. Fucking all this shit. But then he ended up being, like, really cool and being like, dude, you guys are sick, man. I'm going to give you guys, like, a shitload of Lost Energy drink. And he gave us, like, cases of Lost Energy drinks, dude. So many. We had them for weeks. Um, mm-hmm. We would, like, fill up squirt guns and squirt people with them and shit. Like, uh, <laughs> but we literally had – but it was fucked because he, like, thought we were cool. He gave us all this Lost Energy drink, and then we were leaving. We're like, dude, that dude's never going to talk to us again. <laughs> and he finds all this shit, dude. Super glued. We did some I- other shit to his house, too, but – I, do you still keep in that was more contact of a with this for guy? Him. No, never. Lost. That was like a first tour. Drink. That was a first tour. That was like a, a weird first time in Chicago almost, I feel like. That shit Chicago. was fun. Lost energy drink, too. That shit was delicious, too. I remember well, one time um, there was – I don't know how we got there. It, it, was, it was in, like, Kentucky or Co- Covington, Kentucky, but we showed up at this house, and there's like, these – shirtless little boys and this big old woman like on um uncovered mattresses and like a super mangy dog and cat and they were like playing like resident evil or something like that and we were like fuck where are we gonna sleep like because it was disgusting but we left eventually but yeah i I still think about it because it was so goddamn sad how'd you get invited (laughs) back there I don't know. Somebody at the show like brought us there, and we like we didn't want to spend money on a hotel more than likely, and uh, we just we were, we got there like fuck, just like poverty to the max, and then we bounced. We probably got a Holiday Inn or something. Wow, well, it was uh, all sad. Speaking <laughs> of touring, uh, we did an interview with uh, Thomas Eric of the Fall of Troy. Do you guys have any good memories with uh, the Fall of Troy dudes? I know you guys Fuck did yeah. some extensive touring with those guys. We toured with them hella. Those dudes were our boys for days. Nice. We dated the same girl, me and him. Yeah, we're, <laughs> Eskimo, we're all Eskimo brothers for sure. Like, so many different <laughs> ways. <laughs> with Fall of uh, Troy. That story oh, yeah. is a little deeper on other sides, too. Uh, but, yeah, 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 for real. I don't think yeah, I'm yeah, Eskimo especially brother. Crip. Yeah, no comments. But, uh, yeah, those dudes are hella fun. Party dudes. I saw that interview with Thomas that you did. Uh, he looked hella different to me. I was like, oh, shit. Uh, cool. dude. I haven't seen, yeah, I haven't seen that dude in a while. Oh, we're all aging. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, to go any even further than that, I was at um, the Florida Room, this bar in Portland, um, like a, two years ago. A year, I think it was like a year ago. And I like and Thomas was there, and I looked right at him and thought, whoa, that guy looks oh, just weird. like Thomas. And then I left, and my buddy was like, Yo, fucking Thomas with Fall Troy was there. And like, fucking Thomas and I looked right at each other. I think he even nodded quickly. And I just turned what and the hell? right away. Not even thinking. <laughs> I was, like, I was like, oh, I'm staring at this dude because he looks just like Thomas. And then, I guess you don't look like you either. Dude, he, I even <laughs> sure, now that I think about it, he like definitely recognized me and was trying to like nod what's up. And I just walked Oh, really? Yeah, I'm getting yeah. the fuck what the out fuck? Of here. But I just didn't recognize him. Like, it, I just like, it just seemed too random. You know, it was just like. You turn, he just yes. has a guitar. He's like, oh, hey, Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just bust it all. He's like. <laughs> yeah, oh, shit, turn the music down. <laughs> uh, we wrote a Tell Shannon Your Crafts already. Like, that was like a a thing with thomas them i don't know like we showed up to a venue at 5 a.m <laughs> and someone came up and was like hey there's these crafts at the front door please tell shannon her crafts are ready and we just started laughing and fucking <laughs> we're like what the fuck who's shannon and like why do we have to tell her her crafts are ready and um yeah that's how that that song got written You're oh that's waiting. crazy wait Super deep. I, I think andrew was saying something about like how like uh the fall of Troy and you guys, you'd push each other writing-wise. Was that a, a thing for you guys? 
Uh, like yeah. the, how the crowd. I think we'd we'd play off each other. Mm-hmm. I loved opening up for them. That was like tight. I would rather open for them any day. Yes. And like be the first band playing. I like just love to go out there and just slay it. And then everyone else would be like, uh, how are we going to compete with that? You know what I mean? So like it would like can make the show just like level up and up. I don't know. That was something I liked playing with them. Who do you think went crazier? Uh, Fall Troy or you guys at a gig? Uh... I want to say us. Is that <laughs> cocky? Yeah. That's a baited question. There were different. <laughs> there were different sort of rocks. Different sort of rocking out. Yeah. Thomas has a classic rock vibe to him. Yeah. They were like wormy, like squirmy. Yeah. Yeah. They were like noodly. Noodle. Like kid, yeah. kids, them and kids noodled a lot more. Like some fucking gun. Like yeah. That kind of shit. The here's the thing though. Like we used to play with them and Terramellos. Like. As like as the same show a lot, and so like for sure, Terramellos used to go way crazier than all of us. Old Terramellos was so with Worm was yeah. so crazy. I've been talking to Worm, dude. He he did a backflip, like a jujitsu backflip, onto his cab and stood on the cab, like like oh, yeah. rolled backwards onto his cab standing. It was the craziest thing I've ever seen. My guitars. I remember that. Um, yeah, it was wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they used to go fucking nuts, and yeah, it's like. Yeah, we'd, we'd get a lot of inspiration from both those bands, I think. Like, it was just that early time. Oh, yeah. I think, I think, they, um, I think they inspired uh, Turtle Nipple a lot. Yeah, I wanted Maybe to say... subconsciously. Going into Turtle Nipple, because um, I saw this. It was a sticker on one of your albums uh, on eBay. And it said, uh, Turtle Nipple is described as a... Punk energy of Black Flag, the choppy tempos of Dillinger, and the bastardizing prog rock of the Beach Boys to give you the most exhilarating mind fuck you'll ever have. And I think after listening back on that album and completion, that perfectly describes that album. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, I, 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 I gotta say, <laughs> like, it's got like a little more of a like uh, a rock and roll vibe than it does uh, like the metal like core kind of vibe like your previous. I think stuff. that's because I had switched to single kick metal and I was playing single <laughs> kick like straight up. Like I was playing all these big stages on uh, Sounds of the Underground and to mess up on a double bass pedal like ate me inside. I was like, I cannot play double bass. I don't even know why I'm trying. And then I fucking went to single pedal on that album and i don't know for me that changed up my entire drumming style um it might have gave it a more of a rock feel so uh, what you're saying as far as metal rock like that could be simply the fact that there is no double bass on that album i didn't even notice that until you just brought that up that's crazy <laughs> no the the tone like definitely turtle nipple took like a change towards like away from metal and more towards like experimental punk or mm-hmm. so and like soft rock um, yeah like a little soft rock um classic rock now i guess that's probably what they call us but, softy uh, rock yeah. classic rock dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's my dad's favorite genre <laughs> yeah <laughs> heavy heavy little though <laughs> so much of softy um who did the uh, artwork because you guys i noticed for like each album the you guys did like your myspace matching like the same as like the branding of like what was the artwork on your album um who did the album artwork for uh turtle nipple matt errols. coddle or singer and errols errols yeah yeah errols drew it all and um then matt like did his digital wizardry I, I loved is, it. Um, Errols is like our our close homie who was our merch guy for a while slash like band therapist or so. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to Just keep the peace while fucking... you guys Manager. get yeah. drunk and naked on tour. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, another thing I wanted to notice uh, about the, the, the your guys' MySpace is you guys had crazy – uh, aim names, but in your bio, uh, you guys had to describe your live sets. Heavy, heavy, low, low took the stage around 8:30 last night. There was bloodlust in the air, fronted by the chaotic <laughs> shrieks of agony and human suffering of vocalist Matthew Cottle, Thortog, the undoer of life, and Robert Smith, Skurgod, purifier of flesh. 
backing their do you guys want me to run through this whole thing wait what is this what is this dude Where's is this in the from? metro this San is your guys' bio on my face <laughs> i'll continue Let's continue yeah. Backing their tale of misery yeah. are the Norwegian metal masters Danny Rankin, Dan Gore yeah. Fleshfest, and Robbie Dalla, Hogart Destroyer of Souls. To add to the live carnage in the Fritter brother, Brothers, Andrew, <laughs> Andrew, Gedomicon, Reaper of Sorrow on bass, whose bass lines could whip any pit into a frenzy, a feeding <laughs> frenzy, and Chris Fredder, Fail Storn, Life Bane on drums whose blast beats <laughs> could have any metalhead on their knees begging the blood gods to take <laughs> him out. <laughs> Who wrote this? This has got to be Matt Cottle. Like I mean, yeah, actually, for sure. That, yeah. was that, that was that Metro magazine where Matt Cottle was holding a sword. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, fuck. I remember that. And, like, oh. that was, like, yeah, that was at Joshy's house that we took a photo of. And, like, fucking... Yeah, I think that was that time period for Metro San Jose Metro Magazine. You know? Oh yeah, first like magazine we'd ever been in or so. Something. That's amazing. We what was what was like in the magazine? Did you guys like do a little interview or something? I think the dude yeah. came over and we all just smoked weed and talked about shit. <laughs> and, then, and then there was Joshy's Joshy had that like um battle armor in the corner of his room. Yeah, and like chain mail and swords and shit. We just like all played with it while he hung out and interviewed us. Nice. Uh, when did you guys? I so your last tour was Australia. Um, was that just after the you guys put out Turtle Nipple? No, we no. You're two or no? You two after? We we did a uh, hospital bomber. Okay. Oh, right, right, right. And Hospital of Bomber is unique because you guys recorded that differently than your other albums, correct? As a four-piece. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. So four-piece, and then you guys recorded that one live. Yeah, we did the instruments live, and then Rob did the vocals after. Um, Why? I actually like, didn't know what we were going to put that out at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and I just played the songs thinking we were going to go and like actually record them. But then like, we just didn't. And we just like put them out like that live, which is cool. Um, but I don't know. That was my standpoint on it. I always thought that we were going to re-record that for some reason. Um, yeah, remember that kind of like, kind of just like, I don't know, just put it out. <laughs> yeah. We kind of, it's almost like we were demoing it and then just like, it sounded sick. So we went for it. Um, nice. yeah, yeah, I like that record. Yeah, I really. Like oh, that was Sam, right? With Sam. Yeah. Yeah. Oakland. It was, it okay. was like not Fremont. not in Oakland. It was like Fremont, but not where he's at now. It's like a different. Oh, area. okay, okay. So you came full circle with Sam on that one. Yeah. yeah. Well, actually, yeah. the the funny full circle thing is like we we recorded "Fuck It" with Sam, then we went and recorded with Casey ba Casey Bates, and then. um uh, our second album for Ferret had the contract had like quite a bit of money in in the offering so that we could record with like someone with a bigger name is what the record label was hoping for. But instead, we just um, after everything's watched, went went back to Sam and instead of recording at like a big name studio or something like that for like a week, instead, we were able to live with Sam at Sam studio for two months. And so, because at that point, Sam wasn't very well known. Um, so, like, we could use this big pot of money instead to just, like, make this really bizarre recording that was Turtle Nipple. I don't, I remember, like, the, uh, like, the record, like, Ferret being like, okay, I guess. And then, like, after two <laughs> months when we shared it with them, I re something about them being like, okay, <laughs> like, I don't even think they liked it. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I heard it. Turtle Nipple's fucking weird. Yeah. Parts of it. For yeah. Sure. We had a third CD Journey, dude, we, we were supposed to put up. out. Yeah. Like, Ferret, we were supposed to put out a third record we had in contract, but it was a mutual agreement that we had decided we didn't want to be in that big record label spotlight. We wanted to go back to 12 gauge records and help our homies out. We felt like we were at the point where we didn't really have to be like, working and getting all this money and stuff. So we actually refused a lot of money um, for our third CD and went and recorded with Sam in 12 gauge. 
Uh, I don't know, kind of random, but figure yeah. I'd throw that in there. It's a good call, though. I, I'm stoked that we sort of bounce the like at fair. It was great. I mean, Nick Storch and Carl, who run that, were sick, but um, it just wasn't us. I don't think. I think like a smaller group, and eventually we just like yeah. like we had Sam. He could do it. And like that was like a homie, and then like we could put music out through Twelve Gauge, which is our buddy J- Jihad. Like we had all the connects, and like why bring it out of the friend group when we don't need to, kind of a thing. Right. They were so, mad corporate too, or something, you know? Like, yeah. Wasn't fit in. Ferret was too corporate. Yeah, just like too like mainstream, kind of bigger than like what a band that we sounded like probably should. You know, in my opinion. It's crazy yeah. though because it's like it, we fit on a smaller thing. Uh, Ferret was everyone's watching. Mm-hmm. And Turtle Nipple. Oh, and Turtle Nipple. That's crazy though because I mean, honestly, I feel like you guys still have the same sound on both those records. I feel like they they didn't they they compromised with you pretty well. Oh no, they didn't try to change our sound. It was just more like I don't know. It's just like contracts and bullshit like that. Yeah. Like ex- expectations things of the sort timelines yeah. um never like, never tried to change our sound that, that'd be silly no they supported us for sure i think they're great it just we 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 realized mutually that like it it's like we could take it or leave it and so we left them we broke yeah. up with them <laughs> i remember the phone call dude i remember the phone call a mutual agreement breakup i remember we were all stoked actually we fucking smoked a bunch of weed and it felt like a like we we could just relax and do whatever the fuck we wanted. So we're free. Yeah. Let's go, let's go running back to Sam. Yeah. Amazing. And then Sam joined the band. Yeah. Thankfully, he was able to really just join and play the songs because he already knew it. And then he was always a member of the band without being a member of the band. And then he just like filled in for Dan and he pretty played much, with like, Dan too. Was, Okay, yeah, okay. We had a five piece for a second with him. Remember, he filled him with chip as well. Word. I don't remember, dude. But fucking, <laughs> I just know that like Sam was able to play the songs well and he was our friend. So he was just like, we didn't even really have to think about it. It was just like he just started playing. I don't know. And then we had easy. a bit, we had a big falling out with Sam because we'd wake up um, sleeping on the van and uh, he would squirm his little hands and take his blankets. <laughs> <laughs> take our blankets. Uh, squirmy little hands. Wait. So uh, you guys would be on tour and he, wait, what would he do? No, we didn't steal actually have blankets. A yeah, he's a big blanket stealer at night. And so we'd call him, we'd say, Dan would write. There's a whole song and everything. Yeah. The squirmy little hands would steal our blankets. Yeah, at night. I got the uke in the back. I can play it. <laughs> <laughs> is, no, this a, is this a heavy heavy low low song it could yeah. be i guess <laughs> I'll, I'll call nick storch right now yeah let's release it <laughs> no he uh no it was just fun we used to make we, we used to like to make fun of sam a lot we're playing with him. i feel like we would make fun of each other in we good would just try to like bring each yeah. other down in like this like like the never mind game like fucking hey what's up and then just say never mind like we would just like try to like eat each other away and to the point where we would just literally break and then fucking somehow whoever we brought whoever <laughs> yeah. we brought we fucked with so hard that like i think we had at least two people like fly home early i want to say rusty and little mike <laughs> yeah, yeah. Remember, remember little mike we, doesn't what count. was the final straw to, for them to leave the tour Oh, and Dan was shitting in a bag in the back for sure. <laughs> yeah. Was that Rusty? <laughs> that was Little Mike. That was Little Mike? Oh, fuck. All right. Uh, Rusty. <laughs> all those jackets. The dude was wear so many jackets. We had what layers. The dude was layered up. Fuck. The fuck, I was going to say something else stupid. I can't remember now. Whatever. <laughs> I was saying the you were you'd bring so basically you would bring people on tour with you and they would take off because they couldn't handle the heavy heavy load. Some of them, <laughs> oh, not Schweff. arrows. Arrows was always the homie. Oh yeah, Schweff. We fucked with Schweff hard. Dude. He flew home for sure. Yeah, I mean uh, Danny. What was, Schweff did? Schweff, no, Schweff didn't. had to. He, no, no. He took Schweff it, like, was a good. Chip. He was the Re- homie. Remember we had borrowed Munes's like uh, Telecaster, and then. Schweff had always eyeballed it. Like I think Dan was borrowing our buddies, our buddy. Oh movies. yeah, he did. And then, <laughs> oh yeah, we gave it to him. Right yeah, yeah, he was like eyeballing it. I think at so the very end, 
we opened up the trailer when we were dropping him off at the airport to like have him fly home after the tour and he like had to move Muniz's our, our buddy Muniz's telecaster out of the way and like he was holding the telecaster for some reason and we were just like you should just take that and we just gave him a fucking guitar that wasn't ours because we just kind of like <laughs> fucked with him for like two months straight so you stole fucked with him hard <laughs> yeah but it was Muniz Muniz is my boy. best friend yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Muse is another friend at home who like the song Eagle Minadre was written about this guy. That's oh, all yeah, I gotta from, say. That's okay. It was a song about a Schweff too. Yeah. Uh how, what is this? How many dads? Something. So much. Yeah. I don't know. I feel like we divulged. Where where, where were we? <laughs> all right. We're just like uh, saying well, random shit that doesn't make sense. What about the what about the Australian tour you guys went on? Uh, there were a lot of smaller shows, kind of playing smaller shows. Coming from playing a lot of big shows, he was like, "It was kind of like, a, like a little bit of a slap in the face, kind of like fuck, like, like we still had to perform in front of twenty, thirty people. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. which was cool. Um, but it was tight as fuck. <laughs> I like, I do, I agree. It was yeah, wait, why, why Australia? Uh, we got uh, invited. Yeah, you had a fan base out there. Uh, some shows were bigger than others, but yeah. But we got invited, and we just figured, why not? You know, it's nice to go travel. Chris, Chris sure. is right, though. We'd play; it'd be weird. We'd play like some some pretty fat shows, and then like uh, drive a little bit, and then play like weird nightclubs where no one knew art spaces, we yeah, or what the fuck we were doing there, and like that's that weird, weird thing. Mud hut. Yeah, we we did play an Adobe hut inside of a warehouse, and that was sick as fuck. Um, the weird thing is just like going to other countries. And, um, you know, like playing these big ass shows and then going to other countries and people are just like, you know, they just never heard of us. So it, mm-hmm. it's like starting over kind of is weird. If we went back, I feel like it would be better. Uh, yeah. The more Europe you go to the same more... though. Yeah. yeah. So Dan didn't go, by the way. Uh, I didn't go to Australia. Yeah. Wait, I, I did hear that you didn't go because last minute you – you started a mattress business or something? Kind of. Uh, our what? shows, our shows, like, kind of started to die down, left fair, whatever. We weren't really doing shit. I was saying we should end the band. We were kind of in like a weird hiatus, and I was like, "Fuck it, I'm gonna move to Portland." So I moved to Portland, and yeah, I ended up starting like a mattress store up there, like kind of having my own bed store. And I got asked to go to Australia, but it was like. Sam already knew the songs. I was far away. I don't know. It just didn't seem right. I was doing the mattress thing. So I've been watching these YouTube videos of people exposing mattress stores for being fronts. It's like a big really? conspiracy. Yeah, there's like yeah. a mattress store on like every corner of uh, like, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> like, I sold like a lot of blow out of my mattress store. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Mine was pretty straight. I worked for a furniture store and ended up like managing in and they tried to sell it to me and i started my own yeah it was fucking <laughs> random dude i was like 24 25 and had like a mattress store <laughs> dude uh, what a life very random segment of my life i guess yeah so, no australia for me so no <laughs> australia for dan but what was was there any uh how'd you guys adapt to australian culture was there anything oh. uh crazy about australia that you didn't know about I'm fucking scared of the spiders so scared of oh, spiders <clears throat> they're really nice dude they're more humble like they're just like thankful for everything they have um i don't know they were just the way they came off was really open um the people over there were just i'm not hating on them, like america but it was just different dude i don't know the way that they like went about stuff was uh like, they're more thankful they're stoked yeah. on these, they were really sweet they had just gotten oreo minis or whatever like the small oreos <laughs> and they're like have you guys tried these but we'd had them for like 10 years or some shit they like just started watching the simpsons when we had got there like simpsons just made it <laughs> <laughs> just it takes made a while it. For it to get over there yeah. yeah they're behind yeah no we made some really good friends there um the totally unicorn dudes um were just really great to us so yeah no uh in your guys's farewell message you said that was the most fun tour uh that you've guys been on was there any funny stories while you were out in australia where did we say that <laughs> there was a, i didn't say that 
So yeah, Dan did not. Dan did not have fun. This, this is your breakup. <laughs> no, this is your farewell. <laughs> your farewell yeah, message. Read it to us. Read it to us. Heavy, heavy, low, low is not a band. We broke up oh, at the wow. end of 2009 and never planned on letting anyone know because it's pathetic when bands take themselves so seriously and drag out their exit statement from the scene. <laughs> Australia was our last and our most fun tour ever. So thanks for liking us, but this band is played the fuck out and we'll be doing newer, better things in our musical future. <laughs> Sick. Which we that, that has played out. We've done a lot of newer and better things. Jesus. I don't, I don't know. Sounds, sounds very young. I'd say that that, was, that is not correct. Sounds angry. It's angry. Uh, it sounds like an angry. Yeah. Like maybe we were mad at each other or something. That's, yeah. that's the vibe I got. <laughs> yeah. Was it Australia after that, too? I feel like Australia was 2010 or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. Like some... Who knows? I would say that that was a fun tour, but not the funnest tour. Uh, yeah, not the funnest. Funnest tour, Poison the Well. Um, also, the Thursday tour was my funnest. I really liked that one. Oh, that was a good one. Why is that? Um, fucking camaraderie. Dude. I mean, the shows are fucking huge. I mean, mm-hmm. to be honest with you, playing with Murder by Death. Um, shit, I don't know. Like the bands you actually want to watch. Queens of the Stone Age came out with like fucking Murder by Death. Um, I don't know. Like there was just a, it was just a cool experience it was like fuck like i guess i kind of made it you know what i mean like at the time you know like fuck but it was like i don't know that's what you always wanted was that fucking shit to be like, that scene clout yeah i don't know dude that sounds the know. underground tour was pretty fucking sick dude that, that, that was, was that shit was fun as fuck <laughs> that was it playing was like fun. there's too many metalheads like the metalheads yeah. it was weird clashed. it was not normal was i loved like pissing weird. people off on that tour though like people in the Europe crowd. Fun. How would you piss oh, yeah. people off in the crowd? Because they're all there to see Amon Amarth or Goat Whore or Shadows Fall, and then we come out in like little shorts and like you know just like <laughs> playing <laughs> whatever music we play. Yeah, it was fun. People would throw stuff at us nightly. Really? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Oh yeah. I just remember? remember like Rob would say, "Show me your dick" all the time to the crowd. Yeah. Just like, hey, show me your dick. And they would, they never would. Damn. Uh, we <laughs> sucked. Remember, like, we were coming from, like, playing some pretty gnarly shows. And then the first show we played from Sounds of the Underground, Dan jumped over the barrier onto onto the crowd while playing. And then, like, they someone, like, off. yeah, they almost kicked us off the first night. And then, like, someone uh, threatened to sue us and shit so like immediately it set the tone for like uh this is not going to be as fun as a bunch of our other tours um, yeah i yeah. landed on like some dad's head or something <laughs> yeah. get dude, out of the uh, pit bro you know yeah, for real. <laughs> dude you jumped like eight feet across the barrier <laughs> no, <laughs> no uh, yeah. fucking head Switch. on the very Trusty. first night too just not no questions asked like just fucking <laughs> ripped it did you guys get kicked out of a lot of shows uh, sort of? I'd say like yeah. what's a lot? Five shows we've gotten kicked out of, maybe. I don't know. We'd... I can remember two, like right away. Arizona show we got kicked out of. I'd say probably like ten, dude. We're probably yeah, in the double digits. Lot. We got threatened to be kicked off a lot of tours. That's for sure. Definitely. Hasty yeah. reaction. Why is that? Uh, just like we got we kicked just... off the show, man. We even do it. Like number twelve, fucking almost kicked off. Then we ended up being friends with them, like, more. But it was just, like, we were just, we were, like, punching holes in the walls in the back (laughs) rooms and just, like, fucking just raging, just doing, like, rage. And, like, um, we were really young. Yeah. Yeah, I was, like, like 20. We're fuckboys. It's got to be factored (laughs) in. But also, like, you know what it is? It's, like. I haven't broken a wall in months. Oh, yeah. Kids. (laughs) Yeah. You'd be punching that Prius. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, It's a Prius, dog. Uh, yeah, you'll punch right through it. It's like fucking tin foil. <laughs> the, uh, um, gas the, oh yeah. No, like, I swear, like, we were doing some fucking gnarly shit, and like, we had all these, um, people that we looked up to, like, fans we'd look up to, and then it was weird, like, playing with them. It's like you don't meet your idols, kind of a thing, because these bands that we originally, like, sought to be kind of like, we'd play shows with them, and they'd have these 
fake cabs with no speakers in them and all this shit and it's like <laughs> fake but we we're like doing it for real and so like i feel when we played with bands it uh it came off as maybe immature but like we were trying to be real where they were like more of an act or so Damn. yeah they're yeah, pretty yeah. authentic we tried to be an act but we couldn't that was like the whole thing it was like we need to be an act be a business but it's like we could well, that just wasn't in us i don't know we they had, had already lived through what we were going through though too a lot of those bands were older whereas yeah. we were younger totally we still had a lot the, of those bands cared about shit too yeah we cared about like, <laughs> i like that i like that we're talking image. about them but not saying what bands? Oh, we could say bands. haste the ba- haste the day. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, fuck that. But no, a bunch a bunch of bands, nothing, not nothing negative to them. It's just like uh, I don't know. I'd we say like, we got along with all the bands, except yeah, haste even, the day, even no, part. even haste the day. No, we got on, we got along with them eventually. They had to fucking haste the day before they were children. <laughs> <laughs> we sold yeah. drugs on the haste the day tour. We had like blunt wraps at our. At our merch table, those that was on really, that one. That's hella funny. It was really well. That was a good merch was, item. The you guys were twelve selling days merch of wraps? Christmas tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah merch wraps. We had a oh shout out to Royal Blunts for sponsoring us and giving us all these blunt wraps that we turn around and sell. <laughs> were, wait, were they branded heavy, heavy, low, low at all? No, no. no. <laughs> just, I wish. You're just like a convenience to a corner store. Like yeah. had, had suicide kept, silence, dude. Right. Yeah. Yo, you know what? Shout out to fucking um, Crunk Juice. Fucking Lil John hooked it up. <laughs> we uh, we had a Crunk Juice sponsorship for a little bit. Uh, that's that's fucking Little John's energy drink. Lil I John never was. knew this existed. Oh yeah, it tastes like we filmed fucking a commercial fish oil. For it, but nothing happened. Right? <laughs> sure. I took a piss next to Lil John before. Damn. Yeah. I was I was in Atlantic City and he was DJing. I was looking. Dude, trying to sneak a pig He's probably checking our email. We Let's just say it's not Lil him. John, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you know the vibes. <laughs> big John. Diamond encrusted Big John. <laughs> All right. He's the guy that says what really loud, right? Yeah. What? Yeah. 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 Come on, our homie. Dave Chappelle. Right? Yeah. I just know he's the guy that gives us free energy drinks, right? That dude? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's how I know. And not, not our fish boss, oil though. sponsorship. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the band's broken up. You guys put out this farewell message on your MySpace that none of you guys remember. Uh, <laughs> it came off really I angry. Read it. I, I read it. Read it. Yeah, I had to have. Yeah, it right. sounds like sure. it That's sounds so like. angsty. Dude, I love it. It's so good. It's just like, yo, where are also, you finding all this MySpace stuff? On yeah, this? You, I thought it was. <laughs> I thought Justin a, Timberlake bought it and then it destroyed it. That was it's a thing. Up, there's dude. there's a site called uh, waybackmachine.com and oh yeah, and you can just go through archives of different shit. No and, way. Love that. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, I remember that. But uh, all right, so you guys formed who who in the band started downstairs? That was you, Robbie. Rob and I. Uh, okay. Cool. Me and Andrew. Yeah. Nice. So tell us a little bit about Downstairs, because I know you guys are re-releasing uh, Weeping and Creeping. Take yeah. Away, yeah, we, uh, yeah, it's just a, like a slow core band. We called it like Beach Dungeon as our, our genre. Um, we lived in the same area for a while. So yeah, we just, me, Andrew, our buddy Brad, and uh, our buddy Drew just played in basements for a while yeah nice. and yeah that that came out what year andrew like uh, 10? seven years ago or oh, something? oh wait no yeah it's, uh, 11 or 12 2012. really um, yeah, 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 I don't yeah, know. yeah 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 um so yeah it was so limited uh but now jihad our, our good friend who's put out a lot of our records uh put out a tape or re-released the tape nice yeah. And one side's regular speed and the other side's slow speed. Yeah, it's pretty fun. I'm pretty stoked for people to get it. it the slow <laughs> speed is like pitched down because it's already slow and a bummer and like dark sounding and it just really sounds wild. We also did a a lathe cut vinyl, but um, it was pretty limited and those went pretty quick. But 
yeah those are still i think that comes out like early october the pre-sales are available now fuck yeah um and you guys are you know a lot of people that are probably watching this and made it this far in the video they're stoked to hear about uh the tour that you guys were supposed to go on in june but now is being uh rescheduled for 2021 with duck duck goose your boys um, oh boy. so uh can we expect any new music or, or are we just getting the tour with duck duck goose what's going on we've been working on some uh music for like a very very long time <laughs> it's just four songs but yeah we're okay. waiting on i guess we're waiting on dan to record some we're some trying guitar to on him. here's the thing we're trying to convince dan to play and i uh we hope he does he's, he's on the <laughs> spot now uh yeah they're like some songs that we Damn. are they are they the cutter songs or whatever yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They i just don't want to play i don't want to play something i didn't write you know just yeah, to, yeah. i don't want to have to learn something i'd rather just no, remember something learn. or write something new i don't want to like that's why you know, I that's what you do i'm already not the biggest fan of the heavier music these <laughs> days i'm a fan of like our shit because it's sick and nostalgic you know but it, you know it'd just be like it'd become more homework if i had to like learn someone else's parts you know what i'm saying yeah Dude, I think, think we it. should do we should do all our songs and redo them in that like there's a bat reggae and just redo oh, them all. There reggae. we go. And just <laughs> super yeah. chilling, dude. I'm not even trying to play. Chris drums. hitting the bong today. Bongo, dude. <laughs> yeah. Bongo. Just imagine, dude. Imagine full reggae album, heavy heavy low low, just like an older mature sound. I don't know. There's <laughs> no way. So, we're so <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fans would be, be like, tired. "What the fuck?" Yeah. Could be tired. Dude, we uh, were saying Rastafarians won't be like, what the fuck? They'll be like, hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there are four yeah, songs. Uh, I don't know what they'll Tour Jamaica as. or something? Uh, That'd be sick. But yeah. I'll send you the uh, what we have of them so far. Oh, fuck yeah. I definitely want to hear Send them that. to me. I'm trying to learn them. <laughs> yeah. We're trying to convince Dan. You don't <laughs> have to learn them. You just write Hurry up. To send them. me someone's riffs. <laughs> What's the deal? Do you, so there's no, no guitar we'll take on the it? guitars off. There are no, no riffs. It's just bass and drum. Guitar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's bass and drum. Off. That's a fucking genre right there. Dog. Yeah. Bass. Dude, We've been sitting on these. For... I don't know. Is there no I would like to like. There's just a scratch guitar I did. We've been sitting on these songs for a long time. And we've been... We've been like, what the fuck do we do with them? Like, we could put them out. They probably like, what should we do know. with them? Just make them heavy, heavy well, lows. It's like, like we we were gonna <laughs> just make Dan learn them all. <laughs> <laughs> that's what should we do these? That's yeah, preferable, but like, whatever. I, uh, you know, uh, what what I really yeah, want I'd is much Dan's, rather Dan be on it. I'd really like Dan's vocals to be on. So would Dan. <laughs> uh, like I I listen to them. And I, they're they're sick. They're they're cool and whatever the. The weird, like I don't. The, to answer your question is like, we really only have planned out potentially playing shows. We don't really have like a plan. Um, Dude, we said it was the Australia yeah. EP. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Australia lineup. Yeah. <laughs> the Australia roster EP. <laughs> we should just call it Australia. Yeah. The band. Um, okay, we, I'm in it. I'm gonna learn them. I'm, I'm in now. Okay. <laughs> Jealous, and I'm in. <laughs> we we had even talked about like some fucked up shit where like we um we we play maybe like one of these shows and just like burn all the bridges we can and disappear and delete everything again. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the deal? Do why why, why do you guys man. want to do these shows again? Like. It, is it just uh, so you get the boys people back together, it. or yeah, do the people need it? Like, what's what's the the whole reason behind uh, this? Money, and full. We're in it for the money. We're trying to sell out. <laughs> I'm living in a fucking Prius, dog. I need this tour to happen right now. <laughs> big, Dan, big Dan fucking... is just driving the tour route over. And I'm over, on tour. Where are you guys? <laughs> I think show. Dan loses it the most. Yeah. I don't honestly I don't know. I just Yeah, uh, why are we? No, I, I, no, every like every year or two we get in a group chat and we're like, yo, should we do some more shows? And every single time one person's like nah or like one or two people are like nah. But then this year we all said yeah. Like even Chip, he was like, All right, yeah. Like we all just said yeah and then we're like, All right, fuck it. And it's like you 10 guys years kinda, Yeah. We're getting older. Right? That's like the answer. I can only like I can only play so fast for so long. I mean drumming yeah. takes a lot out on the body. 
I don't know. I just felt like I'm like, fuck, how long do I really want to play metal? I don't ever play like this shit. So I just felt like I feel like we needed so to we get it. Tour. <laughs> Just tour and like kind of get that done with and then just move on with it i don't know like yeah we're, we're trying to play fast we're trying to play hell trying fast. to meet girls I'm trying to get married dog i'm old <laughs> yeah, 34 yeah, on thursday true. it's crazy oh yeah that's right it's almost the water year huh? that's how yeah. i knew that album was a libra dog i don't really know horoscopes yeah, yeah. i just know libra <laughs> it's around mine this out. So, yeah, just got this you got this yeah my oh, nice. just go. Fun. that yeah, shit looks kinda, nice you kind of have some tatted too um <laughs> Like I, a biker boy. I think honestly it, we just wanted to have fun and play these shows and it's see what's weird is we were having like a positive reception when we when we like uh announced it which is not necessarily what we had before <laughs> yeah. so like like uh it's i don't know it's it would just be nice to like get ourselves back and get anyone who is interested in this music back and play some just around the shows Nothing yeah I, it sounds like just the same old heavy heavy low low you guys are just in it for the fucking punk rock and you guys miss it and you want to get back on the road yeah right. Fuck yeah and uh i mean it's so fun i i think some of the best times on tour were in our uh, like hotels just joking with the boys you know so <laughs> yeah, i, I miss that kind of so shit, many inside know? jokes and just Fucked up. Remember, Fucked remember when we'd um, have the over twenty one ers the under twenty one ers hotel rooms, and we <laughs> the over twenty one ers would just like go to bed at nine. Yeah. And for yeah. some reason, we would be like up all night. Like, like, but incredible. That, that was like right at the <laughs> precipice of us all turning twenty one. What about uh, uh, merch? for this can uh the fans expect any uh new merch from you guys i know that you guys had some popular items like uh the louis vuitton t-shirt can we expect any represses of maybe some like old designs i'm not trying uh, to get sued by louis vuitton so i feel like that yeah. was very, okay like, let's uh, sue them <laughs> yeah true. we were small enough at the time to do that but as a big like i don't know i just feel like it's like we're stealing their logo or something yeah uh, yeah we are exactly no, it was parody, right? Yeah, parody law. Yeah, sure. But yeah, then we make money off our old merch. I work at a t-shirt company. We had such weird merch. You'd be fine. Yeah. Work. Work. Uh, I would say that we did not have plans to do any old merch. Um, okay. we, we switched it up every tour, too, right? Like, we always yeah. had crazy, like, new weird merch. We'd have we shit had- where, like, we each got to draw a weird merch thing. We did the one where we had, like, a Christian shirt and, like, a non-Christian shirt. <laughs> Those were fun. Uh, Wait, what? Yeah, tell us that one. Oh, we had, like, shirt. Yeah, we had a pentagram shirt, then we had a shirt with like a big cross on it because I was like pretty Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. Jesus. Um, I am too. I am too. All men. The um Yeah, we what's funny is like saying. we were getting like we were so Sick. prepped for this tour. We had like some designs ready to be like made onto shirts and we were like ready to fucking uh like practice and everything and then everything shut down so i'm glad that we didn't make all these shirts and then we'll just, just be sitting on them sitting on them yeah yeah for sure um last question i and i kind of want the story behind it but rob uh you were on a a show called border security australia yeah what what was up with that because i was trying to find the actual video of that and i couldn't find anything reality star I can't find it either. Um, <laughs> I have it. Um, so I, I, I went to Australia early because I was the one doing the correspondence with the guys that were booking it and who was, um, who had invited us there. And, uh, so I went and I was super nervous flying there by myself. I like got dressed up like, so I didn't look like sketchy or anything. And I just drank way too much scotch on the way there and I, I swear I drank like 10 scotches I didn't sleep the whole 16 hour flight and I landed had to take off all my nice clothes and I was like sweating brown and I get to customs and the guy was like what are you here for and uh I was like I'm here to fish because I was there with a uh tourist visa and um 
So he got kind of suspicious with Wait, something you, I said. I why did you say what. fish? <laughs> because we were going fishing. The true story. Like that oh, was that, <laughs> that was like yeah. You also took a shit. Like, You're not there big, to shit though. <laughs> 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 like our big plan was to go out on a charter and do like all this fishing. But um so he started going through this flip cam that I had. And it was not my flip cam, it was uh, Sam's. And I guess one of his bands was taking a bunch of pictures of them smoking weed and like just this weird party vibe. And he was like, what's this? I'm like, I don't fucking know, dude. (laughs) And he was like, okay, we're gonna have to take you over here and ask you some additional questions. So he takes me to this weird area and he sits me by this dude with like fucking face tats. He's like four times my size. He goes in, he comes out and then I go in and this lady comes and she's like, oh, so are you here to play music? I'm like, fuck, how do you know? Like, I guess they went through my phone, you know, the MySpace, all that stuff. Um, and they, then a producer came in and he was like, hi, I'm here with this show, Border Security. Um, if, do you consent to being filmed? Like sometimes it helps you get out a little quicker. I was like, fuck, yeah, if, it, if it'll help. And um, so that started and they grilled me for like a solid five hours uh, about all of that. And eventually they let me go. They said we couldn't play any shows, but we played them. You had to take this long ass flight. And when you land, they basically just interrogate you for hours and say, yeah, you're basically on the show. Like, yeah. And it could go quicker if if you agree to it but if you don't it's going to take even longer than the flight that you are, you just took yeah so yeah, they bought me a mcmuffin but that was like the nicest thing they did most the, the whole time they were just like what's this what's this what's this and like i don't fucking know dude <laughs> that's amazing dude i that's a really funny story but where can we where can we watch that episode um I have it saved on my watch later. Uh, you have to like comb through the border security episodes on there for like nice. through that season. But you you can find it. Nice. Well, uh, do you do you remember what season what episode? I don't know. Okay, never mind. <laughs> I feel like people share it every now and then. Okay, we could ask for it. Just... It got us a bunch of fans from Thailand because I guess. A lot of people, it shows over there. Mm-hmm. And like a lot of people would add us and just be like, hey, I saw you on the show. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, no, maybe that was uh, a cool move for some like international fans in a sense of like promotion. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, we're going to wrap this up, guys. I want to, pl- do you guys want to plug away, let the fans know uh, what they should be on the lookout for? Shit, yeah. just like touring, <laughs> would like to tour when we can. Um, so hopefully the venues can open back up and we can get out there and play some shows. Maybe do like a week of West Coast and maybe a week of East Coast and separate them like maybe a couple months apart, something like that. Nice. Do we know um, like what dates around uh, these are being rescheduled to? That's up to uh, the fucking virus, dude. Yeah. <laughs> well, I see a lot like, of other dates are being uh, rescheduled for 2021, so I wasn't sure if uh, uh, that was happening for your guys' tour yet. I feel like, like that's wait. a lot of hopeful. It's like, a lot of hope. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to juggle dates. Like I want. I want to do it like for sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Also, just like like a lot of those people are. Are, are rescheduling like the movies are where the movies are getting rescheduled and they're just going to get pushed over and over again. It's, it's silly. I mean, yeah. it's good hopes. It's good hopes. Oh. Yeah, certainly. 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 No, yeah, need but to, I, no need to risk anything also. Like it's just us playing some weird shows. So like <laughs> why we don't yeah. want to put anyone at risk. So, but the, we are getting the shows eventually. So yes. as, as yeah. long as, okay, cool. Awesome, guys. Well, thanks so much for being on, guys. It's awesome to see you guys back together via Zoom call um, and telling us the story about the band. Um, thank you, everyone who stuck through and watched this whole video. We are to all the crowd rooms. Don't forget <laughs> yeah. to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. You get to- Yo, I, I used to... <laughs>
I used to watch conspiracy videos, but I used to speed them up so I could get more conspiracy videos. Yo! I love conspiracy. I love YouTube. I watch YouTube at like double speed and shit. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, hey, fucking, they just yeah. linger and shit. Dude, yeah, like, gotta, like tell me, tell me the Earth's flat faster. Yeah. Dude, try watching Alex Jones on, on that speed. That shit oh is fucking God. crazy. That shit is scary on normal speed. Yeah, he sounds like a fucking frog, a high pitched frog at high speed or something. Hey guys, I don't know, dude. Like Clinton, yeah. fucking demons and shit. Yeah. My dad used to love Alex Jones. I yeah. fuck with oh, conspiracy. Yeah. I got super into flat Earth and shit. Dude, me too, man. I there's, I mean, they have good arguments. I mean, wait, I, did you get in a flat Earth for real? Yeah, I hella did. I bought a, a Nikon. I spent six hundred bucks and bought a P nine hundred for fucking experiments and shit. Dude, I got super. I, why didn't I fucking record that shit? Or ask are you recording this? Shit. Just cut all this. Yeah, that, this shit's still recording. So, I got the cops came. I had to go. I do bad boy shit in the Prius, you know. Yeah, yeah, you know the vibes. If I was, yeah. I fucking was smoking and I had a beer. I had an open beer and I was drinking it when they came. And I was like, dude, if I get a fucking bullshit DUI for having two sips of a beer and having an open uh, container right now, like, mm. that's fucked. He was all looking in the car. He's like, you don't have anything weird in there, right? I'm like, nah. He, he was hey. asking about my feet. He was like, where are your shoes? I was like, dude, they're in the car, dude. It's Florida. Like, yeah. I don't know if you guys <laughs> can hear anything of me talking to the cops. It was mad chill. They were kind you of should have filmed it, dude. Yeah. You, what? you, you paused the video. Just, I was trying to explain. I was like, they're like, why are you like pulled out? I was like in front of some random state park off the highway. And I was like, I was like, this sounds weird. I was like in a van a long time ago. We're doing a Zoom meeting. I haven't talked to these dudes in years. Like, I couldn't find service. And this is the service. So I pulled over like. <laughs> they're probably just like what the fuck is this guy talking yeah. about <laughs> dude that's that's like Band, the most... zoom meeting like this guy's a tweaker <laughs> like... that's the most heavy heavy interaction right there that you just did not fucking hey what are you doing <laughs> hey i was in a band 10 years ago check it out you know myspace well now there's yeah. zoom and we're on zoom and like like just... <laughs> don't worry about my feet dude like dude they're fucking weird he called back at the shit fuck cops <laughs>